There we go. Awesome. Uh -huh. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this virtual info night. And uh, thank you for taking the time to join the session. Um, today, we'll be covering the new technology coding society major offered by the ICCIT Council. Um, again, we're going to have uh, an open Q&A to the end. So please re uh, refrain from um, jumping into uh, your mics. And um, without further ado, let's get started with the agenda. So first, we're going to have introductions of our speakers. Um, and then we're going to have Dr. Nixon will talk about the program. Um, after that, uh, Truck will go over the administrative side of the program, so restrictions or career options. Um, and then at the end, you'll be able to open with a Q&A. So anything you have questions, just fire them away. And yeah. So just as Rio mentioned, um, if you have any questions, please don't um, raise your hand throughout the event. Feel free to ask stuff in the chat and we can either attend to it then or we'll write it down and we'll have it at the end. And just during the open Q&A session, I will give a reminder about this, but just use the raise your hand function and we will um, answer those questions accordingly. Um, and as always, please be respectful and we're gonna jump right into it. Hello everyone, I'm Faiza, this year's Creative Director for ICCIT Council. Joining with us today are Professor Michael Nixon, um, the Assistant Director for TCS, and Truck Tran, the Undergraduate ICCIT Program Coordinator. So, um... Professor Nixon, if you want to start us off just briefly talking about the um, program as in general, um, we'd love that to get started. Thanks for having me here tonight, and I'm happy for this opportunity to talk about our new major to all of you. So thanks for attending. So to start with, I wanted to speak broadly about what is the TCS program? What is our vision for this new major? It's more focused and a uh, careful look at the requirements shows that we have a more specific pathway through the courses here at ICCIT. So in a sentence, we would say that TCS is a program about understanding technology and its impacts through creating and doing. And I connect that to the design discipline. So what is design? Most of you probably have some sense of that from the courses you've already taken, but I like to tell a little uh, a little story about what is design by thinking back over the past. So design has been evolving since the bad old days uh, in the, the 1960s and 70s when we first started software development. Then no one tested systems to see if users could actually use them or really if they ever wanted them. The creators and the audience of this software were expert computer users who were expected to be able to troubleshoot anything and, you know, probably actually write extra code themselves. But this wasn't good for actually uh, productivity of workers or for selling software to an audience. It was really for hobbyists. And so even simple applications like word processors or email clients were extremely difficult to use. If you've ever sat in front of an older computer with a, a command prompt, or perhaps if if you've had to do so in some of my classes for certain kinds of installations, you know that there can be some frustration that arises, but imagine that's your whole computer experience. And so over the last, well, especially over the last 20 years, but since the time period I talked about, there's really been a focus on usability, whether you wanna think of it as companies trying to market uh, in, in better ways and uh, compete for uh, people's eyeballs and their, uh, their, their dollars, or whether it's because there's a recognition of how poor software was at times and how often software failed with failure rates on products uh, well over 50%, uh, not a great state of affairs. Uh, you can imagine that if engineers building bridges or uh, things of that nature were failing over 50% of the time, it would be a travesty. But software is really uh, out there in comparison. And so we've seen the evolution of the, uh, the team that works on technology from having a programmer to then involving technical managers and quality assurance testers. But where does the designer come in? Who is this person? 
So at first, technology and software development really involved designers as graphic artists, visual designers who came in at the very end to make things look pretty. That really wasn't sufficient and didn't lead to good usability. It was very hard to change things at that, uh, at that state. So now we see the role of a multidisciplinary designer, a designer who can come in, who can understand not simply or not alone uh, the visual aspect, but really uh, much more involved and reliable design processes that are iterative, that understand that we can get things in front of users and get information from real people about what they want to do and what they want to use uh, in their workplace or for their entertainment needs. And so today's designers need to go through phases of user research, prototyping and creation, and being able to understand the deployment and impact of what they've made. They're involved from the beginning. They anticipate market and technological trends, and they understand how to communicate with stakeholders and all the different parts of the highly developed production pipeline in order to ensure products are more successful than they have been in the past, that they meet the needs of their audience uh, the way we know products uh, can. And so today's designers create design deliverables that are very sophisticated, showing an understanding of users, such as user flows and journeys, that show an understanding of cognitive and visual principles that shape how we should create these interfaces. And they can also document what they've done and justify their choices and write reports that will be understood uh, up and down the hierarchy. So design today can't involve single discipline, highly specialized designers. And I see the TCS program as being a place where we design uh, tomorrow's designers, uh, if you'll allow me to say that. And so uh, TCS is a program that's right for you if you want to have a broad set of skills and ways of thinking that are compatible with getting into the design industry. The skills you're going to learn are going to involve, yes, some strictly practical, easy to put on your CV skills uh, involving Python programming or using uh, you know, data visualization tools or prototyping tools. It'll involve some digital platforms. It'll involve some tools for analyzing data, perhaps in the data science realm. These are things that the courses in TCS are going to, uh, to teach you. But there's also gonna be uh, skills that are around critical thinking that allow you to focus on the social and ethical elements uh, involved in the adoption of the technology that uh, we're thinking about, and especially about the platforms uh, that uh, come to dominate how we uh, produce and deliver uh, software and other high-tech inventions. So we could go through a, a whole list of things from user interface design, user experience design, emerging methods like participatory design, the use of technocentric ethnographies to understand uh, humans who could, uh, could use certain kinds of technology in different ways, different kinds of qualitative studies that uh, you'll be able to transform into the workplace and help people understand uh, the, the impact of technology but also some, some element of quantitative analysis, being able to, uh, to bring in data and use it to make choices. So how are you gonna succeed in the program? I'm gonna say two things to this. Number one, you need to embrace practice. You need to embrace doing. This is, uh, this is not a program where you're gonna memorize a bunch of facts and regurgitate them. And uh, you're, you're going to be successful by passing some written exam with lots and lots of vocabulary or something like that. Virtually every course is going to ask you to put your skills into practice and show us that you understand the principles that have been introduced in the course. And there's going to be this level of application as far as demonstrating and being successful. But then number two, and this is probably pretty practical, but you're going to have to learn to enjoy group work. If group work is something where you say, well, I put up with it or, you know, I hate it, you're going to need to change your attitude because uh, working with other individuals and learning how, and we do try to teach you, we don't just try to throw you into a group and hope for the best, 
we, we try to talk about you know, group agreements and methods for uh, resolving uh, disputes and ways of scheduling work that you're going to have to use in the workplace. And for better or worse, you've been on the forefront of remote and hybrid methods of doing group work that are being embraced in the workplace. When you go out into the job market, you're probably, if the trends hold up, going to find as many jobs that are remote or hybrid as you are fully in person. And whether or not you like school that way, I hope uh, you're going to be able to use that to your advantage to say you've been successful and demonstrate your ability uh, to work in those ways. So that's my way of introducing what is the TCS program and what I what I would say about it uh, if you asked me and what may make what might make the program right for you. Thank you, Professor Nixon, giving us that insight and sharing those helpful skills and tips. Now, uh, Chuck Tran will be discussing about the admission requirements, future career options, and more. Thank you for having me, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chuck, and I'm the CCIT Undergraduate Program Coordinator. Um, the first question, the most common, what are the admission requirements to get into the TCS major? Uh, so all program requirements are listed in the academic calendar, which is posted online. Um, TCS major is considered a type three program, which means it's limited enrollment and it is competitive. Admission into the TCS major is based on academic performance in a minimum of 4.0 credits, including completion of CCT 109, CCT 110 and CCT 111. Uh, students must have a CGPA of 2.4 um, for entry into the program. Um, in terms of the 4.0 credits, I do want to note that uh, courses marked as credit no credit cannot count towards the required 4.0 credits. So keep that in mind if you are taking courses and you're thinking of um, selecting credit no credit as um, on one of your courses, note that you do have to have 4.0 credits with grades uh, for entry into the TCS program or any ICCIT program. Uh, the second question is, what other programs can I combine with TCS? Um, really just anything that is available at UTM. Uh, the Office of the Registrar has an online uh, program selection guide that students can explore. Um, some common combinations that we are seeing is CCIT major with TCS, as well as a computer science program with TCS. Uh, but really, it all depends on the student's interests and what your other interests uh, will be. Um, in order to graduate from UTM, you need to complete uh, one specialist, two majors, or major in two minors. And so having a TCS major, you can combine it with any other major or two minors. And then what are my career options? So Professor Nixon had explained, um, there is emphasis on user experience design, uh, user interface design, programming, and other technically oriented careers um, that students may, may enter. Did you want to add anything, um, Professor Dixon? So one thing that'll become clear when you start looking for work in this area is the wide range of job titles that are out there. And uh, especially if you're using tools like LinkedIn, uh, et cetera, uh, you're really going to have to try different keywords because depending on the company and their emphasis, like the breadth of the design role, uh, you know, you're going to see things like UI designer, UX designer, UI UX designer, UX researcher, uh, usability analyst, and then other things like content strategist or data analyst. And so, you know, when I do that scan, I see there's, you know, there is no one consensus because you know different companies are putting a different emphasis but i see these roles in uh, all the big companies microsoft amazon um, the big five banks bmo cibc scotia td um, the game companies you know ubisoft uh, zynga 
and uh, consultants like Deloitte. So there's, there's a huge range of companies that are looking for people under the design umbrella. Thank you, Professor, and thank you, Truck. Um, I will be conducting the next portion. Um, we did collect some questions both from our online poll as well as Instagram. So the way I envision this going is I'll ask the question and I probably won't um, direct it to either one of you. Just if you have something to add, please step in. So what are the redundancies between CCIT, DEM, and TCS? Um, I guess in terms of courses as well as um, what you're learning as well, maybe. Sure, you said this was uh, open to us to answer, right? Yep, thank you. Okay, so what I would, what I would say about that is that CCC, CCIT major is our broadest, most open major. And uh, you know, it's gonna allow you to make lots of different combinations. And it's really the place where the main, app, the main part of our you know, communications and media studies kind of work and teaching take place. Whereas TCS is intended to have the majority of the, uh, the more technical uh, skills. And then of course, DEM is its own, you know, kind of its own thing with its emphasis on business and entrepreneurship and marketing. And it's a specialist. So, you know, it's, you, you kind of know if you want to head in that direction and it's, it's pretty separate from what you would do in the others. Uh, the other thing I should say, I don't think uh, Truck mentioned this, but I'm sure she can expand on this, but you need to have distinct uh, credits. I, I believe it's 12 distinct credits. So you can combine the majors, but you're going to need to work with, uh, with our uh, administrative staff here to make sure you have the right uh, combinations to fulfill everything. So uh, you just have to be a little careful if your, your intention is to have two of our majors. Yeah, maybe I'll take the time now to elaborate on that since it is a common question um, that is asked. Um, many students ask if they can do a double major in CCIT and TCS and absolutely. Um, as Professor Nixon explained, um, to, in order to graduate and if you're having multiple programs, you do need to have 12 distinct credits. So what does that mean? Uh, within the C, uh, TCS program and CCIT, you need to have completion of 8.0 credits. And in total, that's 16 credits. And therefore, if you need 12 credits uh, distinct, then you can have four credits overlapping. So the required courses would be CCT 109, CCT 110. Those are overlapping with CCIT and TCS, as well as 208. So there is room. And my recommendation, if you're thinking of doing C, uh, CCIT and TCS or any other program combination is use Degree Explorer. There is a planning tool on there that you can use to map out your course selection to ensure that you have the distinct credits. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we can move on to the next one then. Um, will this program be offered as a minor? I guess that's a question more for truck, but either one is okay. As far as I know, um, no, but perhaps Professor Mike uh, uh, Nixon can explain. I don't. Uh, no, there's no current uh, plan in the works uh, to, uh, to do that. Uh, we're trying to understand though, the, the desire for minors uh, you know, it does take some work. We'd want to make sure that it's something that the students want. So, you know, we're currently working to see what the numbers look like on, you know, students who are looking specifically for minors. Uh, we'd, we'd want to know that it would actually have some kind of impact, uh, that combination. You know, just, just from my brief experience, I haven't seen a, like a ton of desire for minors, although, you know, some of you on the call tonight may, might be able to uh, to tell me otherwise. So it's not an impossibility, but it's not something that's going to happen uh, extremely quickly. Okay. Thank you. And we can move on. So this was a question from our um, Instagram poll. It's a more specific question. Can I add this program to my degree? I'm in my fourth year. I believe they said they were a CCIT student, but they're willing to take another year. Is that an option for them? Certainly. Um, 
again, the TCS major is part of the four-year Honours Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, as I mentioned, if you're thinking of adding a program, um, use Degree Explorer to plan out your course selection. Certainly, there are some courses where prerequisites are required, um, so those have to be taken first. Um, prerequisites are strictly enforced within ICCIT. Um, but take a look at Degree Explorer um, and use that planner tool is my recommendation. And you will see um, when you can anticipate to complete your program requirements and whether you're on track to graduation. Okay. Um, Professor Nixon, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, nope. Okay. And the next question is, will there be any co-op or internship opportunities available? specifically for the program. So I can, all of, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was going to say that CCT 410 and 411 are available for TCS major students. Those are our fourth year um, internship courses. You need to have a prerequisite of um, minimum of 13.0 credits and a CGP of 2.5. Uh, CCT 410, I believe is a uh, program requirement for TCS. So um, that would be a great opportunity for students to explore a TCS field um, and get credit for it. Okay. And I was just going to add that, of course, uh, they can take the professional experience certificate in digital media communications technology, and that will give them a couple more opportunities uh, to, to, to work and get experience in the workplace. Sounds good. Thank you. And um, if anyone has any questions about the professional experience certificate, you can ask that um, in the open Q&A as well. I don't mind answering questions about that too. And Diala, I see your question. We'll attend to that um, at the very end. We just have a couple more here. So are there any corresponding graduate school programs? I know for CCIT, for example, um, it's a direct link to iSchool. Is there any um, relations like that for the TCS program? Yeah, I would say like as far as like corresponding or direct, it's pretty similar. Uh, downtown, the uh, the iSchool school has the Master of Information uh, with a concentration, for example, in user experience design. Uh, if you wanted, you know, I, if I can just speak briefly to the idea of grad school, uh, you know, you want to think about what it's going to do for your career uh, in this field in particular. You know, there is professional as well as uh, research degrees, and you need to decide that going into your, your grad program. If you're intending to get more experience, uh, connect with, with, you know, more expertise, put it on your CV and get a job, then a professional, you know, master's degree uh, is going to be useful as compared to something that could or, or could not lead on to a PhD later. And then additionally, we see that these degrees, depending exactly on their name, they will have a different emphasis on uh, the scientific approach, artistic approach, or social sciences. Let me tell you what I mean by that. OCAD-U has an inclusive design master's, more on the artistic side. If you go to somewhere like Goldsmiths in the UK and London, they have a master of science in user experience engineering. Uh, if you would look at... Uh, University of Chicago, they have a master's in computational social sciences. So more on, you know, obviously the social sciences side. Uh, Northeastern University has a network science PhD. So these all do, you know, roughly the same thing, but it comes down to maybe a, a couple extra courses in statistics or a couple extra courses in, you know, programming or in, you know, visual art. So you really need to look at the different degrees and see like, am I trying to add a new strength, or sorry, add a strength that I, that I think builds on what I already have, so I'm really an expert in this field, or am I gonna try fill a gap so I have more of something that I really didn't get that I thought I needed? You know, for example, you really want those quant skills and you think, you know what, I really need uh, a grad program that has a, some good stats classes that I didn't, didn't cover for some reason. So you really wanna think about that as you consider uh, grad work. Okay. Chuck, um, do you have anything else to add to that? Or Yeah, I'd just like to add, if you're exploring graduate school, um, Career Center is a great resource. And um, if you heard me speak before, I keep saying visit the Career Center because they are so useful in terms of um, 
helping you figure out what your career goals may be and um, definitely check them out. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much for those um, answering those preloaded questions. Um, now is our open Q&A. For those who weren't here at the beginning of the meeting, how I intend to hold this is, if we could please raise your hand and unmute. Um, we can go in first come first serve kind of style. Or if you have any questions and you're not comfortable raising your hand, you can put them in the chat and we're um, okay to answer them there as well. So Diala, I don't mind answering your question first or asking your question first. So if the CCIT major has a program requirement of two credits in third year, and you take those credits from TCS third year, will that cover both TCS and CCIT program requirements? I, I can take this one. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, if you are doing multiple programs, so two majors or major and two minors, students must have 12 distinct credits. Um, that means uh, with using this example, CCIT major and TCS, uh, it's 8.0 credits uh, per major, which is a total of 16 credits. And so you can have four credits overlapping. Um, the three required courses that will overlap will be CCT 109, CCT 110, and CCT 208. These program requirements are listed um, in the academic calendar. And so if you um, have that, those 1.5 credits overlapping, then you have room for two and a half credits more to overlap, but definitely use the planner tool in Degree Explorer to map out your program requirements. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Um, yeah, Scott, please go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Scott and I'm in my third year of CCIT. So this question, I've thought about it because I've discussed with my dad, I'm thinking of, you know, adding TCS as my major in addition to CCIT because right now I have two minors and I'm kind of behind on my minors, but I'm really caught up on CCIT. I only have one course left until I'm finished CCIT, thinking I balanced that wrong. But uh, I do think TCS, sounded really interesting and it would be a good way, you know, to add it on and it adds coding to the equation. But I was thinking for a student who maybe doesn't have the option to put both on their degree and they wanted to major in two separate things. Is there, is there any, like from an employer standpoint, would there be any uh, advantage to having TCS because it says coding right on it? Uh, versus CCIT, if I were in first year and weighing my options, do I want to major in CCIT versus TCS? Are there any inherent advantages from an employer standpoint that you guys have maybe looked into? I think if you're in first year, I think you have a clear, a much clearer decision because your path is, is laid out. But I would say that uh, in this field, like as you've heard me talking tonight, you're gonna have to tell a story anyways. You're going to have to make a fit or make clear the fit between what you did in school and the skills you have and whatever the job ad is in particular and the, the set of requirements that they're looking for. So if you're going to tell the story that I went to the CCT major because that's where you're at at this point and uh, these are the experiences you picked up, this is how you, you fit, you know, I think you can tell that story. And I doubt, you know, I, I'm not at the, I don't, I don't think they're going to go, no, that's impossible. That's clearly, uh, clearly not possible. Your degree has a different name. I don't think that's where we're at for, uh, you know, for this field. So I think as long as you can, you can tell that story, but yeah, I mean, as far as the, like the extreme legibility, like we do intend that, you know, the term coding is going to communicate that aspect. So it will be an advantage, but I, I don't think it's one you can't overcome if you're already in the CCT major. I also want to add in terms of employability, I'm just thinking about transferable skills as an ICCIT student. You have your hard skills, which is having a degree, having software proficiency certificates, but then there's also the soft skills that you're going to have to demonstrate to your potential employer. And that is problem solving, ability to receive feedback, active listening, um, managing stress, working independently or part of a team. And that's what you're going to have to um, show in your interview when you are meeting your potential employer. So 
it's not just about the degree, but it's also your experience outside of the classroom. And that's why we have internships available as well as the professional experience certificate. We also have the media skills workshop. Um, registration starts next week. Uh, check your email for more information. Okay, th thank you so much. Um, Serena, please go ahead. I have a question here. Um, what's the difference between computer science and TCS? Sure, I can, I can speak to that. So uh, computer science is a field that is concerned with what is computation, what are its limits, uh, how does that work? And uh, the fact that you learn programming is from the perspective of many computer scientists, purely accidental. Now, of course, they have to consider the, uh, the job outcomes of their uh, graduates as well. And so they have you know, their own systems for doing that. So the difference would be that in TCS, uh, we're not thinking about computation in a very abstract way. Instead, we're thinking about how it gets applied uh, and uh, then how what it can create impacts society. So if there is a degree of uh, abstraction, it's more around thinking about uh, the impacts on society. So let me let me get even like more more pragmatic to answer your question. Uh, we take up front end coding user experience design in ways that the computer science department doesn't whatsoever. Uh, so while a computer science student might think about going into uh, front-end design, or they might think about going into user experience design, they're probably telling a story as well that may be you know, accurate, but really isn't completely served by their, by their degree. So I'm, Hopefully that wasn't too, uh, hopefully that helped. And also um, computer science is a science program and uh, TCS is considered an arts if that helps with your decision. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Faiza, you're up next, please go ahead. Yeah, we have a question here. Um, what are some good research opportunities? Um, from this program? I guess it's a new program, so you're not, not sure about any of the RLPs coming up, but is there any talk about it yet? I just don't know, like, I don't know, for example, all of Cosman's uh, ROP projects. Uh, I'm working on an ROP with the uh, the Bolton collection in the library where they have a big uh, video game collection and we're looking at how to uh, apply that to, to, to classwork, but that's not per se super tcs -y. Um And I just don't know, I, like I don't have the full range of those uh, in my head. I, so I know that's not super satisfactory. Truck, do you have any other insight into that? Um, in terms of research, um, when you're doing your programs at UTM, um, in order to graduate, you still need to have the 20 credits. And so there are um, independent study courses that you can look at if you're looking at doing a research project base and you can connect with me further. Uh, if you really want to do more research and wish to work with a supervisor. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope that answers your question, but Rio, please go ahead. Hi, um, I just wanna further go into the difference between CS and TCS and um, what various coding languages you will learn in the program and how that would like differ. Sure, so uh, we're gonna start with Python in TCS the same way that you might in uh, in computer science, it's the, you know, it's the North America's foremost uh, learning language. And so you're, you're going to see a lot of that regardless of where you might learn your programming. Uh, but then we're going to go into more like, like applied use cases as I was talking about. So, uh, you know, C sharp for programming unity uh, or Let's see, I'm trying to think of some of the, the other upper, upper level examples. Like you might get into, does anyone, uh, does anyone teach R? Like there might be more on the data analysis side 
than there would be at all in the, the CS program. And then of course, there's the, uh, the 260, 360, 460 stream, which involves uh, learning uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then uh, web programming, which uh, again, I'm pretty sure is a unique offering that wouldn't be present uh, over in CS. So you're gonna find more on the front end, uh, you're going to find more for specific like entertainment and creativity purposes and more for data analysis than, uh, than you would find uh, in CS. Okay, um, Rio, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Um, Scott, again, please go ahead. Hi again. Uh, I just heard the word unity, which is a word that really gets me excited. Uh, and Fortunately, uh, something I didn't expect to actually be so hands-on with so far in university when I signed up for CCIT was Unity, and I've been happy with how much I've been able to work with it thus far. Uh, but I was wondering, and because I personally haven't actually seen if there was a list of additional courses being added for TCS, but will course, courses be added or current courses rearranged to you know, be more hands-on with pro, uh, projects on Unity? Uh, will there be more opportunities with Unity? Yeah, because of yeah, thanks, Scott. Because because of the major, we're going to see a bit more, and you know, it, it might be a little slower than we might want, but you know, we're going to see a little bit more uh, direction as far as that goes. So you know, we have two eighty five immersive media environments. Um, I'm introducing, I think it's going to be three seventeen, which is going to be entertainment coding, which is a follow up to two eleven, and. Didn't happen remotely for you, Scott, but 382 will, it will eventually have some more, uh, some more unity in it. Well, so yes, I'm, I'm hoping happening. to get hands on with at least one of those in my, in my last year or two here. <laughs> sure. Yep. And Scott, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I can make um, a recommendation as well. I'm not sure if these courses will be involved in the TCS program, but I have taken um, 285 and 286, which is um, interactive media mm -hmm. design, as well as immersive environment design. And you're very hands-on with um, Unity, as well as other uh, courses like Photoshop and front-end development as well. Um, I received a PM, and I believe this one should go towards truck, but um, as a um, CS student, um, in my first year, am I able to use some of the credits I've taken um, to transfer into the TCS stream? So as a first year student, if you're looking to apply for post, you need a minimum of 4.0 credits. And that includes CCT 109, 110, and CCT 111. And so we will be using your other courses, such as CS um, and other electives, uh, to make up for that 4.0 credit. So yes, um, it's all counted towards your overall degree. And um, we will be looking at your CGPA when we um, assess your admission into the subject post. Okay, thank you. I hope that, does that answer the question? Um, I, I believe so, yes. Um, I know you still have those prereqs, but um, I'll send a message to them, see if it, it's okay. I would just add that students are sometimes wondering from CS if they can skip uh, 111. And, you know, because they're part of the post requirements, essentially, the, the answer is no, uh, we're, you know, we really can't. Uh, if you think about it, then we're, we're letting another program define the, the entrance into our, uh, into our major, which is not really something we can, we can do. So in spite of the fact you're learning Python, it, because it's a program requirement, we're not, we're not just going to waive it. Yes, Scott. Yes, it does. Yeah, so CCT 111, if you took it um, this year or previously, it will count towards TCS. As long as you didn't and see our credit, no credit. It. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and uh, I just want to add, if you didn't take CCT 109, 110, or 111 this year, uh, they, those three courses are available in the summer session. 
Thank you, Scott. Um, just just one question in the chat. Um, will we have more courses honing in on front end development? Right now, there's only the 260, 360, and 460 streams. But um, if there's anything that would um, help us um, prepare for a front end development job, I'm, that might be a question more for Professor Nixon. Yeah, I mean, CCT 211 is going to uh, be involving with, you know, uh, graphical user interface design with Python. Um, I can't name another, like another course code off the top of my head. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm, I just, I, I wouldn't, I'm not willing to agree with you that those are the only courses in that area. That's, that would be my main thing. Thank you. And um, Scott, just sorry, one more question um, from the PM. Um, can you describe the learning curve? For example, I'm, I don't have any formal coding experience, only a bit from high school. Um, is this TCS program uh, good for beginners? So what I'll say is that CCT 111 assumes that you've never programmed before, and it introduces what is the architecture of a computer? What does it mean when we're issuing commands to it? And you know, the first assignments and labs are around entering Python commands and looking at what they do. So in that sense, they, you know, they do start, well, I, I do start off for beginners with that assumption, but you are going to hear lots of terminology. You are going to run into lots of things that are new. And so the very beginning of what I talked about, I said, uh, you're going to need to practice. And so programming as a practice should be something you do want to learn to do. It should be a skill that you want to pick up, a craft you want to hone. If you don't, like if you're like, nope, I, I, like, I just don't want to learn programming. I just want to somehow get through this. I don't think you're going to have a good time. Maybe that's a little too reductive, but you should at least be willing. Like it should be something you're open to. Um, and if you are, you can learn how to do it and you can pick up that skill and you can hone it all of you. It's so it's uh, it's something we can teach you to do. It's that's not a problem. Okay. Thank you so much Professor Nixon. Um Scott, did you have your hand up or did that answer your question already? I think it was still up from last time. I mean, I could ask another question <laughs> now that I'm unmuted. Um if you have another one sure, um and then I can do a follow up after that. Okay. Uh this won't pertain much to me, but I remember in my first year 109 and 110 had hundreds of students in the room, but I, I was lucky enough to get into 111 and it only had roughly around 40 to maybe 60 people max, maybe less. Uh, will, the, will the course be changed a little bit to be prepared for the influx of people who might be interested in taking that course with the new major? I don't know if that's a, an appropriate question since it's kind of you know, managing, but came to mind. Yeah, during during the remote teaching, we've gone up to 100. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working on scaling some of those aspects. And I think we anticipate offering, you know, that many. And we also offer it uh, over the summer as well, although I haven't been teaching it. So, you know, I think we're doing those two things to, to help with the numbers, if that's a, an issue that, you know, that some students were facing uh, when we were only offering 40. Thank you. Um, I have another message here. Um, Truck, will this program be deregulated? Yes, it is a deregulated program. Um, so DEM specialists, CCIT major and TCS major are all regu uh, deregulated. And it's the PWC um, major and minor that are um, arts and science. Deregulated it, uh, just means that it has a different tuition fee structure and um, and it works differently. So students who are enrolled in 4.0 credits during fall winter are charged a flat program fee. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Um, I don't have any more questions from the chat. Um, does, anyone have, does anyone else have any more questions? And just for those who came in, just as a reminder, this event is recorded. So if you're worried you missed out on a few of the other points, um, we'll be posting this to our YouTube right after the event.
Um, at least I have to YouTube, why am I not so? Okay, I guess we can wrap it up. What do you think, Faza and Rio? Good? Okay. So um, yeah, um, if you have any more further questions, um, I guess reach out to SCCIC Advising or Professor Nixon, your email as well. Um, if, if you don't mind just dropping those in the chat so the students can have it, really appreciate that. Or you can just reach out to even the ICCIT Council on Instagram and we'll um, answer those questions for you. But, uh, you know, Truck and Michael, thank you so much for coming out and answering the questions for all of us. Um, I know it's a new major and there's a lot of questions, especially right now. So uh, thank you so much.